I got no effects. I got the gimme gimmies. I got a book. I got this musical. I got a recording studio. I got fat records. A dungeon. I have a drug problem. Help me. It's not funny. No, it's she said, not help funny. me. What's wrong with you? That's fucked up. Michael John Burkett, born in 1967 in Newton, Massachusetts, is the founder, bass player and lead singer of the iconic punk band No Effects, as well as the newest punk rock museum. Throughout his career he has achieved success with multiple projects, including the cover band The Gimme Gimmies, created a punk rock musical and played a pivotal role in getting millions of American punk kids into politics. He became a voice for the queer and cross-dresser communities and the main symbol of a truly successful successful independent band without assistance from MTV or any major label. <laughs> However, he also experienced a neglected childhood, was mugged and bullied, watched other bands win the punk race because no effects wasn't pretty enough, battle addiction after his 30s and saw his closest friends drift away following his latest marriage to a porn actress. And so we go. Fat Mike's family ended up moving to Beverly Hills, California, where he attended school. His grandfather, James Burkett, was a famous Hollywood movie producer in the 40s, but died before Mike was born. His mother, Aline, worked first as a manicurist and later became a businesswoman. His father, Paul Burkett, owned a shoe company and was a hell of a salesman, earning a lot of money. His parents split up when Mike was a kid and his father had another daughter. As a kid, he was always left alone by his parents. His mom worked but also liked to dance, date and have fun. She was single, pretty and lived in Hollywood. And so was his dad. Both of them smoked a lot of pot, something that kept Fat Mike away from weed all his life. As a teen, he attended Beverly Hills High School, where he mingled with rich kids. One of them, Eddie Mactinger, even had an elevator in his house, for which he would cut the power when his maid was on it. His friends back then were already soon to be stars like Josh Brolin, the sons of Ricky Nelson, or this kid from this show. Mike will go to summer camp at Mountain Meadow Ranch in Susanville, California. In 81, when he was 14 years old, he got exposed to punk rock for the first time after the DJ Joe Escalante spun who killed Bambi and beat on the bread. That changed Fat Mike's life and he went straight to a music shop to buy the Ramones album. It was Eddie who later became a successful doctor that took Mike to his first rock show at the Go-Go's.
It was killing jokes. And Mike stayed in a balcony eating fries and drinking coke. But he loved that shit. He started hanging out in the Chateau de Grand Café where the Beverly Hills skated kids like him or Melvin would meet the really dangerous punks and skinheads who were in gangs. My mom couldn't help but notice my spiked hair, weird friends and the occasional black eyes and bruises. She was upset that her plan to move me to Beverly Hills and keep me on the straight and narrow had somehow backfired. <laughs> Mike faced some issues with older punks as they would rob his boombox for heroin. One of Mike's rivals was Mike Knox from the band Rigor Mortis. See ya, mate. Get pissed, you fucking homo. One night, Knox ordered another skinhead to completely mess up Mike, but they got Mike's friend by mistake. That made Mike go north to San Francisco and ditch the Hollywood punk scene as he was about to attend college. In that summer, he worked as a delivery boy for some of the richest people in Hollywood. One of them was Liz Montgomery, who you may remember. He also accepted Eric Melvin's invitation to form the punk band No FX. Anyway, uh, we're a punk band from uh, Los Angeles, I suppose, called No FX. Thanks to the fat tips he was getting, he bought a van for tours and even made enough money to pay for the first TP. In college he met Wendy and both start living in the dorm. She had a bike accident and quoting, she was a little crazy. That's your crazy girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> that's Mike's ex nutty hey. girlfriend. <laughs> Eventually he met Heron who would become his bride, wife and ex-wife and the mother of his only child, Darla. As he was always home alone, he started living in the van and later on with Heron sharing flats with other NoFX mates and all of them became his true first family. By the late 80s and after the first summer tour in 87, he was actually making money and didn't need to work at his father's shoe store. These are the figures here. In this notebook? For the whole summer, the eight weeks, we spent $856 on gas. We made $1,143 on t-shirts after spending... Well, what happened is, we each made $259 each. After putting in $150, so we each made $109. And we made an average per show, $36 average $36 per show. $36 a show. So, let me tell you. In the early 90s, his father loaned him $20,000 to start the Fat Records label. Paul Burkett was a salesman and a owner in the shoe business. He lived in an adult's only apartment to avoid having Mike at home and later took him to Israel to live a reclusive life with the Jewish conservative family, something that Mike escaped from and never forgave. In 79, Paul gave Mike a half-sister who lives in Georgia and is also successful as a journalist. He would marry for the last time in 99, moving to Palm Springs with his new wife, Maggie. In later years, he tried to reconnect with Mike, even dressing himself as a punk rocker to impress him, but it never worked. When he died, Mike was the last family name to appear in the obituary. He was sick for about three months and he called me about twice a week and say, will you come visit me? You're my only kid. And I, I didn't go, because 
because I don't want to fuck, because blood is shit. Blood is not thicker than water. Blood is fucking nothing. He died, and she called me and said, Michael, are you going to come to the funeral? And I said, I'll come, but I'm about to go on the warp tour. And I took our tour bus with my wife, and I did drugs and fucked all night long. Got in his suit, was up all night, and went to his fucking funeral. And I got up and said, I love my dad, I wish I knew him better. And I got back on the bus. His father never asked for the $20,000 back. My father had dementia. He lied in bed for months. Once in a while he called me. He asked me to fly down. I told him that I'd love to. But I had things to do. And so he died without his son. After a show. 